New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet is facing a crisis just two months out from the state election after he admitted to wearing a Nazi uniform at his 21st birthday party. He has since apologised, labelling the decision a grave and terrible mistake. From Bondi Partners, I'm joined by former Howard Government Minister Peter McGoran. Peter, how are you? Good. Excellent, Tim. When I was 21, it's a lot longer than when um, the Premier was <laughs> 21, but I never, ever, ever, ever would have even considered wearing a Nazi uniform. No, I've been to a, um, a, a lot of fancy dress parties as a young man and I never even saw a Nazi uniform. So, look, it was a terrible thing for him to do. It was a callow youth. Uh, it's not that long ago. I know. It's and it's not that long ago. Look, I know. He's only young. If you want to berate him, you can. Yeah. The point is, politically, mm. I think he's through the net. The damage to him, though, is that much of, their, of the state... Liberal Party's re-election prospects rest on him because mm. the polling shows, even though the Liberal brand is badly damaged and the internal ructions and failure to pre-select candidates is damaging them, yeah. he stands alone. So it's taken the edge off him to an extent, but I think the news cycle will move on pretty quickly now. But it's like you can see why Chris Menz, as he's popping his soccer ball up off his boots, saying, yeah. oh, no, this won't do any damage. It's yeah. like, just like... Yeah. Like, all, all he needs to do is pretty much tape his mouth up and watch. How confident is he? I know. I think their polling must be even better than uh, the public polling because he's very relaxed, didn't take any cheap shots, didn't have a bet each way. Mm. Mind you, a couple of others have come out. Uh, Bob Carr, who's perennially grumpy, but he's come out and really uh, slammed... Um, Perrottet, in much the same terms you just did. None of us did it. Even 30 years ago, uh, or longer for me, when we were 21st, mm. uh, when we were 21 having parties, we would never have done it. It was offensive, repulsive, even back then. But, look, the point is, people don't think that's who Dominic Perrottet is. It, yeah. I agree. It was only 20 years ago. It was far more enlightened when we were having, than the ages we were having 21st mm. birthdays. But they don't... It, it's not as if they think, yeah, yeah, I always thought he, he was two-faced. I always thought he was a, a bit of a creep of a guy. They don't think that. They no. like Perrottet, so they're going to forgive this as a youthful indiscretion. Yeah. And I like him as well. Don't get me wrong. I like him. I just find it dumbfounding that he yeah, ever dumbfounding. did it. That's all. Yeah. But the, the bottom line is... I think that from a New South Wales perspective, and I stay arbitrary right in the middle, I don't you know, sway either way, but it's almost like the New South Wales public can see that Labor has finally got itself together and they're seeing the infighting now in the other part. Correct. Party. Absolutely. Absolutely. When are the Liberals going to wake up in New South Wales and in other states, but it's particularly disastrous in New South Wales because they can't decide on getting candidates into key seats to campaign. Yeah, they're killing each other. Killing now, it. let's go federally. Anthony Albanese has been on the front foot in Papua New Guinea. Um, some very interesting things set up there, including how he'd like to see a new NRL team come out of PNG. And I think that that would be great to see the Pacific uh, in a sports perspective. Uh, what do you think of the way that he's performing? Obviously, a lot of talk about Medicare. Medicare needs to be fixed. Um, we said that it was going to be a tough start to the year for him. It's, it, it could be shaping up that way. Yes, definitely. He's, he showed the same sure-footedness in, in the Papua New Guinea visit of last week that he's shown on the international stage. Mm. So his strength is definitely foreign policy. Um, and Papua New Guinea is sensitive for Australian prime ministers. He was greeted warmly, not ecstatically, like President Xi Ping uh, Xing was uh, four years ago, but he had achieved the major objectives, which was to sign Papua New Guinea to a, a defence and law and order pact. Um, look, there, there's plenty on the Prime Minister's agenda. You're right, M Medicare is a perennial debate because the states want the federal government to pay more for the public hospitals. Uh, the federal government says, well, you're not even running them properly and you're not looking at alternatives mm. and triaging people before they even get to the emergency departments that are overcrowded. Um, so he's got a lot of energy issues. That's not going away. No. He's made a promise to reduce the price of energy. Um, inflation's tempering around the world, particularly America and Europe, so that's, that's a help. The big issue is the voice, because that's got the potential to emotionally stir up the electorate and polarise it. US presidents, what are they doing? <laughs> Kept all their documents in the backyard. Well, they're fairly careless with top-secret documents. It? It's remarkable. Um, look, it, look, 
on the face of it, and there's still a lot to come out on this, it does seem that Joe Biden's collection of secret documents is nothing compared to the industrial scale of, of uh, Donald Trump's. But the principle's the same. You have retained documents that, if viewed by the wrong persons, is a threat to national security. Yeah. So, yep, they're both tied with the same brush. Absolutely. And there's some images there of, uh, of course, the, the Delaware home that we're speaking of. And uh, this follows former US President Donald Trump and that whole story. But uh, moving on to something a little lighter and, and something close to our hearts, horse racing. We always yes, tend to finish with a little indeed. bit of horse racing. And um, I was up at the Magic Millions as part of our Racing Dreams brand. And it was, it was a fantastic week. The polo, the show jumping, what yeah. it's become over, what, nearly 30 years is fantastic. I felt very disappointed for both Katie Page and Jerry Harvey and Barry and everyone else involved in the Magic Millions yesterday and the Gold Coast, Gold Coast Turf Club. You can't do much about rain, can you, sometimes? True. We race on turf tracks, yep. Tim, and we race every Saturday on turf tracks so they get a wear and tear. No other country, uh, jurisdiction in the world puts, puts them under the hammer. So occasionally these things will happen with unexpected weather events, um, but... Turf tracks is the jewel in our crown as a spectacle, as a better medium and for horse welfare. They're far better than synthetic or dirt tracks. So we just have to put up with the occasional setback. Absolutely. And from the welfare perspective, people like you and I need to continually defend uh, an industry that, that, you know, has it right up there, up the top as a priority. Because it is a great industry. It employs so many people and it was so accessible to the public up there on the Gold Coast. I was there for a couple of days, only in and out. But there was, it was something there for everybody at every level. Correct. And we're very transparent in the thoroughbred racing industry and breeding and racing. All the information on the care, protection all of horses, all the statistics in regard to injury or fatality rates are all available. So, But we do need to explain ourselves uh, in a non-confrontational way, in an educative way, and we will have to, I suspect, given the makeup of society these days, from here on in. Employs a lot of people, doesn't it? Employs a lot of people. It brings a lot of people under the tent. Yeah, probably about 200,000 uh, full-time and part-time jobs. Yeah, that's huge. They're huge. Pete, we will talk again soon. Thanks, Tim.